crazy fam before we continue with the stream i wanted to quickly talk about the witch queen campaign right a lot of people are asking is it worth it is it should i get the game is it worth trying at all how does the campaign feel what's happening after and all that first of all i want to talk about the campaign real quick because i've done it on legend and i've also pretty much spent a lot of time on all the other new activities both of the six-man activity and the three-man activity. So I spent a lot of time playing the game. First of all, I want to go over the campaign real quick. One of the best things that I like is the progression. So when you're actually playing these missions, right, there's li these little kinds of checkpoints, which you kind of end up at the chest, you get some loot, and you also get the modules, which help you to infuse your gear. So you're not at all times flying to the tower and all that. I know this is a, like a little thing, but at the end of the day, what happens is, these little things really make a difference. The second thing I really, really, really enjoyed about the campaign is the legend mode, right? It's not easy. And that's what made it really cool for me personally. Because at some point when we play through these campaigns, guys, it almost feels like they don't have any weight to it, right? You would just rush through the campaign. And none of the bosses really made a difference. You didn't give a shit. You would just melt them in a matter of seconds. Like you, you would destroy them. And that was it right there. I wanted it to be more impactful. Like I would play the campaign and I'd be like, I'm at the final boss, but it really doesn't, it really doesn't feel like it's the final boss. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? It's just, you just get him out of the way in like half a minute, he's dead and boom, the story's over. But this time, when you play through the leg legend version of the campaign, man, it takes time, it takes strategy. And this brings us to the story. In my humble opinion, this is the first time after Taken King that they managed to really, really nail the story. Was Forsaken good? Yes. But the reason Forsaken was good was because it was built around one of the best characters in the game, Cade. And it was like an emotional thing, right? I still enjoy that story a lot. But with Witch Queen, everything, and I mean everything, had just so much weight to it that it was crazy. I don't want to, you know, spoil a lot for people that haven't played it, but there's a really cool cinematic at the end that makes a lot of sense in terms of the story. And you're like, the, the story ends and you're like, holy shit, that was cool. I, I want to do that again. Another thing is the missions weren't just, you know, get from this point to another and that's it. Before Witch Queen, we would just rush through missions. Now, there are, as mentioned, those checkpoints and we have these light bearer hives and the whole thing just is so, so cool. Design of the character of the light bearers is absolutely phenomenal in my humble opinion, right? The sounds they make, the way they look, the way they move, the po they pop the supers, absolutely destroy you. You gotta be really, really careful and another thing and a huge huge factor with witch queen for for me personally was the new weapon type the glaive i'll be honest i didn't expect much of the glaive i was like you know it's just another melee weapon but once you do get it and you do use it you understand just how cool it is because it's pretty much like playing a new game at some point right this is the first melee weapon that is first person like with the sword you pull it out but you you go into a third person with this one it doesn't happen and then you have a melee and you have a ranged attack you can shield yourself it's a really really cool addition to the game and i feel like it nailed everything when it comes to witch queen in some of those encounters the glaive is very very helpful if i was to rank this campaign in terms of story in terms of the level designs how every mission felt and how rewarding it was i truly believe it was better than anything we've had before this so hey Zaki, what up man Thank you for the 499, man. I appreciate and that. Moon is selling it. Another thing, and I, I, I can't move on to the next topic without mentioning this, obviously, because it is a part of the campaign and it is a huge part of Witch Queen in general is the crafting system. Dude, listen, I've been playing MMOs all my life, guys. I, I really have. I absolutely love MMOs right now. I'm playing tons of Lost Ark and I love every second of it, right? Actually, I might be too addicted. But that said... Listen up. This crafting system, when they announced it, I, I always remembered the crafting. They called it crafting in Osiris, the, the expansion of Destiny 2, one of the expansions, one of the first expansions. And it was horrible. 
It had nothing to do with crafting and it was just not good at all. It was such a big disappointment. And after that, I was like, they will never get the crafting done correctly. That was literally my thoughts. And I didn't really have any expectations for this one. So I was going in with the mindset of, you know, it's a new addition to the game. It can't be worse than Osiris, which it, it would be really hard to make it worse than that crafting system or well, they called it crafting system, but it really wasn't. So my expectation, as mentioned, was pretty low. Now that said, when I actually tested out and I'm actually working on a few weapons right now, th this crafting system is fucking amazing. Now let me tell you why. Now you're actually motivated to play with weapons that you like to upgrade them, right? So in order to craft a weapon, first you need to get the weapon and you need to take off the materials. Anyway, you guys know how all of that works. But once you like one of the weapons and you craft that weapon, then you then you have to use it and use it a lot in order to level it up and unlock all the perks, which once again gives you more incentive to use the guns that you love. And then you unlock a lot of perks. Like there's a lot of perks on each weapon. Obviously, it's not all of them. That would be crazy and people would be able to craft some absolutely broken shit like imagine if we we could craft a bow with kill clip for example right it would, it would be it would be absolutely insane so i understand wh why the balancing is there and it absolutely makes sense and it should be there but this is another huge part of of witch queen and once again man if you take a look at the full picture from a player that has spent a lot of time already on this on this expansion i gotta say in my humble opinion once again this feels like the best expansion they've ever made and i've not even played the raid yet i am definitely gonna make a full witch queen review after i get to play the raid and then give it some time and get a good feel of the you know whole game as such and then i'll make a full review on all of this but at the moment once again, if I was to rate this expansion, I would probably put it on top of any other expansion in terms of story.